what do you think, again, hypothetical, might be outside of this? Maybe emergent phenomena? Like if you look at cellular automata, mm -hmm. some of the, you have extremely simple systems and then some complexity emerges. Yes. Maybe that would be outside or even, would you guess even that might be amenable to efficient modeling by a classical machine? Yeah, I think those systems would be right on the boundary, right? So um, I think most emergent systems, cellular automata, things like that could be modelable by a classical system. You just sort of do a forward simulation of it and it'd probably be efficient enough. Um, of course, there's the question of things like chaotic systems where the initial conditions really matter and then you get to some, you know, uncorrelated end state. Now, those could be difficult to model. So I think these are kind of the open questions. But I think when you step back and look at what we've done with the systems and the, and the problems that we've solved, and then you look at things like VO3 on like video generation, sort of rendering physics and lighting and things like that, you know, really in core fundamental things in physics. Um, it's pretty interesting. I think it's telling us something quite fundamental about how the universe is structured, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, in, in a way, that's what I want to build AGI for is to help uh, us uh, as scientists answer these questions uh, like P equals MP. Yeah, I think we might be continuously surprised about what is modelable by classical computers. I mean, AlphaFold 3 on the interaction side is surprising that you can make any kind of progress on that direction. Alpha genome is surprising that you can map the genetic code to the function. Kind of playing with the emergent kind of phenomena, you think there's so many combinatorial options that, and then here you go. Yeah. You can find the kernel that is efficiently modeled. Yes, because there's some structure, there's some landscape you know, in the energy landscape or whatever it is that you can follow, some gradient you can follow. And of course, what neural networks are very good at is following gradients. And so if there's one to follow and, object and you can specify the objective function correctly, you know, you don't have to deal with all that complexity, mm -hmm. which I think is how we maybe have naively thought about it for decades, those problems. If you just enumerate all the possibilities, it looks totally intractable. And there's many, many problems like that. And then you think, well, it's like 10 to the 300 po possible protein structures, uh, it's 10 to the 100 and, you know, 70 possible go positions. All of these are way more than atoms in the universe. So how could one possibly find the the right solution or predict the next step and and it but it turns out that it is possible and of course reality nature does do it right proteins do fold so that that gives you confidence that there must be if we understood how physics was doing that uh in a sense uh then and we could mimic that process i.e., model that process uh it should be possible on our classical systems is 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 basically what the conjecture is about and of course, there's nonlinear dynamical systems, highly nonlinear dynamical systems, everything involving fluid. Yes, right. You know, I, I recently had a conversation with Terence Tao, who mathematically uh, it contends with a very difficult aspect of systems that have some singularities in them that break the mathematics. And it's just hard for us humans to make any kind of clean predictions about highly nonlinear dynamical systems. But again, to your point, we may be very surprised what classical learning systems might be able to do about even fluid. Yes, exactly. I mean, fluid dynamics, Navier-Stokes equations, these are traditionally thought of as very, very difficult, intractable kind of problems to do on classical systems. They take enormous amounts of compute, you know, weather prediction systems, you know, these kind of things all involve fluid dynamics calculations. And, um, but again, if you look at something like VO, our video generation model, it can model liquids quite well, surprisingly well, and materials, specular lighting. I love the ones where, you know, there's there's people who generate videos where there's like clear liquids going through hydraulic presses and then it's being squeezed out. I, I used to write uh, physics engines and graphics engines and in my early days in gaming, and I know it's just so painstakingly hard to build programs that can do that. And yet somehow these systems are, you know, reverse engineering from just watching YouTube videos. So if presumably what's happening is it's extracting some underlying structure around how these materials behave. So perhaps there is some kind of lower dimensional manifold that can be learned if we actually fully understood what's going on under the hood. That's maybe, you know, maybe true of most of reality.